Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me in this little Star Citizen video today. So I want to talk to you guys about purchasing ships and the best way to go about it, right? There, It's so easy in this game to get so overwhelmed. There's so many ships and especially as a new player coming into this game, you look at this list and you're like, man, here's all these starter ships, but what do I upgrade to and how should I get there and what's the best path for me? And the first things I really think that somebody needs to consider is, you know, how are you going to play? Are you going to be playing mostly solo? Are you going to be playing with a friend? Are you going to try to do crew? Are you looking to get into orgs and play with like multi-crew gameplay with multiple people on your ships and things like that? And the next thing to consider right along with that is your budget. You know, are you trying to stay at least amount of money possible to enjoy the game? I kind of fall in that area. I, you know, I'm not a person who goes out there and spends thousands of dollars on this game. So there are so many resources that we're going to touch on that you should probably look at before you do this. For example, there is a, a website out there called Urkel Games. It is one of the best websites out there when it comes to ships. It will break down all the different loadouts that you can do, all the different modules you can put on it. It'll give you the information about it, where to get those modules, what the ship has, what DPS it has when you change those modules. But the second best... I guess site that you can go to is YouTube, right? I mean, we're on YouTube now and I do a lot of overviews on ships of mine. And I always make sure before I do an overview on a ship that, you know, I give that ship a, at least a decent shakedown. I play some gameplay with it, do some flying in it so that, you know, I'm not talking about a ship that I haven't even touched. And that's why there's not any gigantic big ships. You don't see the Carrick on my channel because I haven't gotten to fly it yet. And I'm not just going to do an overview on a ship that I don't really know anything about. So the next big thing to consider when you're going through, you know, and looking at ships is that this game is an alpha, right? It's still an alpha. Ship specs are changing. And though the big parts of the ship specs aren't changing right now, they could, right? The way the shields work, um, the sizes of shields that you have, the maneuverability of the ships can change, the speeds, all kind of that. So it's something to remember and not just base your decision on pledging a ship by the specs that it currently has because it definitely can change at any time. So guys, I want to kind of give you an example of what I'm talking about when you're talking about looking at ships. The example I'm going to use right here up front is I'd like to talk to you guys about mining. So let's say that you have your starter ship and you finally said, you know what, I want to go to the first stage of mining and you get your prospector. Well, just because you have your prospector, you're going to need a ship that can transport port cargo. And what I mean by that is you use your prospector to mine and refine the ore, and then you take that ore, you take it to a refinery, and it gets put into cargo containers after it's completely refined. Well, you're gonna have to have a ship that can carry that cargo container. So whatever amount of SCU refined ore, you're gonna have to have a cargo ship that can carry that ore. It doesn't necessarily have to be a full-fledged cargo ship, but at least a ship that can carry that much. So they're just going into mining, you know, it's almost like you need two separate ships. You got your miner and you got your ship to carry it with because it's very unlikely your beginner ship or your cargo ship you started with in the game is going to actually be able to carry, you know, enough SCU to get you there because you're going to take this refined ore all the way down to a station or something where you're going to sell it at. So this next example that I want to go through is where I'm currently at in Star Citizen, right? So I love the salvaging game loop. I have a lot of fun with it. And when the Vulture came out, I knew that was going to be a game loop I was going to probably stick with for a long, long time. And I pledged the Vulture. Now, because I got the Vulture, the Vulture doesn't hold a whole lot of SEU. You know, it packed maybe 21, 22 to really do it right. Maybe if you could squeeze 23 in there. But I'm in a position where I play a multi-crew with the Vulture. So I always usually have two people with me. In my case, you've heard me in all my streams and stuff. Jess is always with me. So she's always down getting the cargo and moving it around while I'm doing the um, salvaging. But we need a ship. We all, we're always renting a ship or I usually rent a Cuddy Black or something so that we can fill the Cuddy Black up and the Vulture and then we take that back to sell. So right now, the two ships that I'm actually looking at getting, uh, it's two completely different ways, right? 
I'm looking at just pledging a Cuddy Black, which is like 46 SCU of cargo, but it's a medium-sized ship. And the reason I'm looking like looking at that particular ship is because of the claim times, right? The time it takes to actually claim the ship. The second ship I'm looking at is the Taurus. The Taurus is more of a multi-crew ship. You can run it with two pretty easily, and we have been. I normally purchase one with AUEC in the game, but it is a fantastic cargo ship, and that's the larger of the ship, so my claim times are higher on that ship. So it's it's things like that that you think about, that you need to think about when you're considering it, because you don't want to get stuck, you know, just in your starter ship all the time because you're waiting on ships to claim, and when you're, you know, your buddies are in and you want to jump into the game. So just little things to consider that make a difference, or at least they make a difference to me. But the real thing is, it's no, there's no real wrong answer on what you pledge as a ship. And that's the great thing about Star Citizen, all this, even everything I'm saying, it's a personal opinion on what you want to purchase. And it is okay to purchase a ship just strictly because of the way it looks. There's nothing wrong with that. My starter ship and the ship I'm probably never going to part with is the Avenger Titan. I think it is fantastic. I think it flies well for me. But mostly, I love the way it looks. I love that modern type of retro vibe that it has with the black and white and everything and I love the stock skin that it has but that's a personal preference to me is it super useful yeah not too bad for a starter ship right it holds s8 scu of cargo and you can throw a ptv in it and stuff and and do little things around the verse but am I going to make big bucks using that ship probably not and the last thing that I really wanted to say on the topic of like buying ships and trying to pick your ship is Know that this game, you don't have to purchase anything. You know, outside your initial pledge to get into the game and get access to the PU, you don't have to spend any more real money. You can absolutely play this game with your starter ship. There's no reason why you can't. And as of late, the wipes are getting kind of few and far between. We've been getting, you know, a couple of patches before they've been doing wipes. And if this is something that's going to be keeping up in the future, it's going to be a good time for a lot of people because... You know, a lot of people don't have hundreds of dollars to spend on these really expensive, you know, pixel pictures as we call them or whatever, digital spaceships. And that's okay. And if it's something where you want to try ships, look around out there. Look at discords. Um, I'll post a link to the one that that I that I run for my, my channel. And there are so many groups that are so willing to help new players and loan ships and let people try stuff and experience stuff. I remember coming into the game my first time to like walk around an 890 jump or a Carrick. I thought it was awesome. I mean, everything is just so fancy and crisp and it's so big. And it's just, you know, for me at my age, it gave me that, you know, big Battlestar Galactica type ship feeling. And the fact that you can literally walk from one end of the ship to the other and it feels realistic is just fantastic. So just remember, you don't have to spend that money. And if you can't decide, don't spend the money. Make sure... You know what you want before you do it. And just know that you don't have to buy ships because of specs. You absolutely, again, can buy ships just because you like the way it looks or you like the way it flies or it reminds you of this or that. So, guys, that's really all I'm going to say about this topic. Um, you know, I see it all the time. What ship should I buy? What ship between this ship and this ship? And, and you know, you read the comments and it's, Nothing but people giving their opinion. And that's the thing about it is, is, you know, you, you're going to have to base a lot of the decisions off of what, what you want. But hey, I hope something I said in here, you know, gives you an idea of where to start looking or what direction to go. And as always, I will see you guys on the next one.